when I was given the opportunity to talk here, I thought, how on earth do you, do you uh, compress 40 years of research into 10 minutes? But anyway, let's have a crack at it. So <laughs> my niche area is called processing of natural materials into high value bioactives. And if I talk quickly enough, I want to cover supercritical extraction, which is a type of processing technology, New Zealand propolis, which is a source of high value bioactives, and then two big collaborative R&D projects that we're involved with. The Bioresource Processing Alliance and Cyber Marine. Let's see if that's the right way. No. Uh -huh. So, what is an extraction? So, most of you do an extraction every day without it, without kind of thinking it being like that. So, making a cup of tea or coffee is a simple type of extraction. You're extracting your tea or coffee with very hot water. You're extracting the flavour into the water, and then that's becoming your cup of tea or, or, or coffee, and you're leaving the solids behind. So supercritical extraction conceptually is almost exactly the same, but what we're doing is using very high pressure carbon dioxide as the replacement for hot water. So these are the sorts of things that we've looked at over 20 or 30 odd years. So um, the variables that we've looked at are the type of the solvent, the uh, pressure and temperature, they, um, they affect the, the solubility the flow rate, the particle size, and going from lab to pilot to production scale, that's critical for getting these technologies commercialized. Probably what we spent the most time on though is all the types of natural materials that we've extracted. Probably over the years, we might have extracted something like 200 to 300 different raw materials. I've probably lost count by now. But anyway, this hopefully, if I can get that to work, uh, some of the things that have been successfully commercialized. So right in the center here is the large scale supercritical extraction plant in Nelson. What you can see here is just the tops of the extraction vessels. The vessels themselves go for two stories underneath so they're absolutely massive to uh, contain the pressure in here. What I'm showing you here as well is the type of bioactive molecules that are extracted. So if we start on the, my left hand side, are um, some uh, marine oils and whales probably were harmed in the, uh, in the making of krill oil. Green shell mussel oil, um, uh, fairly recent uh, extraction cannabinoids from hemp and tea, uh, cannabis. God, I'm losing my, uh, losing my words. A couple of natural material, um, native materials, horopito and totorol. This is kind of an intriguing project as well. We were extracting this compound out, out of old fence posts and swamp logs, for example which I'll talk about next, and a little known fact that hop extracts made in New Zealand are used to flavour Heineken beer. Let's move to propolis. So again, this is quite a long uh, research program. We were looking at four major areas to um, kind of improve our understanding of the science of what's in propolis and how to process it to make it into a consumer product which people would buy. The four things we were looking at in detail was the bioactivity, actually what's in propolis that makes it uh, bioactive, for example. How to uh, control the quality of the propolis that we're making, so being able to like, give a UMF rating like honey, for example, but compounds. How to process it, because it really is horrible material to work with. And the final one, I'll show you some pictures of as well, is um, a technology to turn this resin into a powder, which is almost like a magic technology. Here we go. So this is what propolis looks like from the hive. At the top of the hive, they have a mat. The bees come in, put the propolis here, which is a mixture of beeswax and um, poplar leaf extract. They kind of masticate it all together and then stick it in these slots in the hive. That stops the hive from um, having invaders and also um, provides temperature control and stops um, microbial uh, invasion, let's say. Do some pretty rough banging of the mats to get the propolis. And then it's extracted either with our proprietary supercritical process or I think the pointer works. No. Or um, ethanol extraction. You see these molecules here, the thing about the cyclodextrin is that these can actually fit inside the cavity, which is, which is kind of weird. But when they go inside the cavity, they stop having resinous properties and have 
properties are more like a sugar, so they can be turned into a do well. Um, turn into a, a more water miscible product that can be turned into a powder and is more bioavailable in the body. Moving right along to something else. Okay. Ah, here we go. So a big project that we, uh, me and the team here have been involved with as well is called the Bioresource Processing Alliance. This has been a kind of a career long interest of mine in how you recover value from byproduct streams. So conceptually, we've got our primary product that comes into our generic factory here. It could be milk, <coughs> it could be wood, it could be fish, it could be apples, for example. And out of it comes our main product, let's say milk powder or apple puree or orange juice, whatever. What we also get out of it are the un unused parts of the primary product, the solid waste, and a lot of liquid waste, which is coming from the water that's used in the plant as well. Typically, these processes also use a lot of um, uh, high carbon fuels like coal or, or, uh, or natural gas to provide the energy as well. So, while our main focus is on how to utilise these streams to, to generate more value, we're also looking at how we can reduce the water and reduce the carbon input into the plant too. Some successes that have come out of this project um, and disclaimer, they're certainly not all from Callaghan, they're from the partners that work in the project as well. Probably the biggest one here is this um, echo gas plant which is up in Reparoa. So this is taking um, uh, bioresource streams that are too degraded to be used in anything else, and now food waste as well, and it's turning it into biogas, <coughs> excuse me, which is a mixture of methane and CO2. So the methane gets burned to produce energy and then the, the CO2 is actually used then in greenhouses to grow tomatoes. So it's kind of a perfect example of, um, use that awful phrase, the circular economy. Uh, some things that Callaghan's been involved with is turning um, grapeseed into a nutraceutical and second grade avocados into a, a freeze dried avocado powder. So look out for these in your supermarket soon. And um, quite an intriguing one that we've worked on with um, Māori organisation is they're growing um, ginseng in pine forests. And so um, we've helped them to uh, process some of the ginseng into um, manuka honey product. Last of all, you can actually buy this in your supermarket. This is made from uh, the bits of salmon that uh, aren't uh, salmon fillets, let's say. And the last thing I wanted to talk to, which is a, a good segue uh, on fish, is another big collaborative project we're working on, which is being led by Plant and Food Research. And this is all about trying to design the fish processing factory of the future. So the concept is um, the factory will take any kind of um, marine resource input, um, shellfish, um, underutilised whole fish like uh, jack mackerel or carway or something like that, or um, the filleting byproducts like the heads and frames, that sort of thing. They're munched up in some kind of way. We do an online analysis that talks to the AI controller. And the AI controller will then decide what process steps to carry out in what order to generate some of these types of products that are on the sign here. So, we're working on these process technologies and also converting kind of standard chemical analysis into, into online analysis techniques so that um, we can train the AI controller. And amazingly, it's 40 years and 10 minutes. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>